So sur- Lord, because I love the drills. How drill. did you know about it, ma'am? Because uh, I uh, nag-review din ako sa YouTube. And ilumabas lang yung channel mo. I think lumalabas lang siya depende sa anong most search mo, ganun. You yeah. And I like the drills me. kasi you you let them answer verbally, which is really Yun. Cool. Para lang daw nakikipag-usap ako sa kanila. Yun That's yung sabi true. nila lagi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I'm sure and dami mong messages every day, sir. <laughs> Hindi ko na nga ma. Yun, but, buti ma'am kay nag-message ka kasi lagi ako nagsuscroll na sana yun si Ma'am Jenny kasi minsan naglalag na, hindi ko na ma-search yung pangalan. Know. Kaya so, nga, chinachat ko na every now and I then. With, oo, <laughs> kaya kanina, I was with um, Sir Ricky, the top four. Wow. The, yes, Filipino majorship. And now, part two naman ng ating uh, English majorship. At the same time mm-hmm. po, Ma'am Jenny will touch... Uh, Gen Ed, no? Sa English. So, that's it. Um, I hope that you will still enjoy, no? Listening to Ma'am Jenny. <laughs> Sorry po, ha? Kung na, naantala tayo dahil sa um, ang dami kong sinasabi. Well, uh, part naman po kayo, no? Sa success na meron ako rito dahil po yun, kayo yung dahilan kung ba't ako naririto. So, there would be no... Yay, thank ano, you, Sir Melvin. <laughs> okay, so ma'am, uh, ma'am Jen, I should now leave the floor, no? The, the, the platform to you. Ikaw Teka lang, share screen ito. muna ako. Ah, sige, oh, sige, sige, sige. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am Irene Garcia. Garcia, sa yung 37 pesos, mabuhay po kayo. Hi, Jamela, Jamael. Thank you so much po sa 49 pesos. Ayan, pasensya po pag hindi ko nabasa, ha? Amalia Manbote, thank you so much po sa 49 pesos. So here it is now. Ayun. Ma'am, ayos na po ba yung um, uh, pag-access nyo po sa sa next slide? Like, uh, hindi na po kayo nahihirapan. Yes, po. Okay Sige. naman. Sige ma'am, so, ikaw na po bahala sa kanila ha. Bugbugin mo sila sir. para. Ayan. Sa board <laughs> exam, naman. hindi na sila pagpapawisan. Thank you so okay. much ma'am Jen. I can ano see their comments po. Alright. You. Ang ganda ng hairstyle nyo ngayon, ma'am. I like Thank your bang. Thank you. <laughs> I can see their comments po, right? Sige. Sige pa. Okay. Sige. So, hello, good evening. Let me see. All right. Ah, okay. Here are the comments pala. So, good evening, everyone. I hope you can see my slides. Well, I am. Okay, Miss Jenny again. So, thank you for the part. Okay, so I was so overwhelmed with the comments, LPTs. Thank you so much. And now we will continue. Um, I've noticed in my previous in the previous lecture that I've had, it was so long, and some of the questions are a bit uh, complicated, right? So this time, Paul, I've tried to make it okay simple, and I've prepared fifty items only. Cause yeah, it it was not it was less than a week, I think, and. Yeah, I didn't have enough time as well. But anyway, magandang gabi, LPTs. Yes, this is live. <laughs> Nagbangs no. It's originally, okay? Anyway, so major in English and general English board exam review, LPTs. We will start right away. So, board exam tip. As always, in my first lecture, I told you to forget everything you know when you review, right? Forget everything you know when you review, which means be in a clean state of mind when you review, okay? Lapat linisin yung utak, walang ibang aligot-got na iniisip, okay? So be in a clean state of mind when you review, just as what we are doing right now, we are about to start. So everyone, pre- everyone's ready? Okay. <laughs> now, for the first question, guys, okay, look at this one. The national policy that describes the level of educational qualification outcomes. What national policy is it? Is it the Philippine Qualification Framework? A C- a, okay, ASEAN. Is that ASEAN? Anyway, ASEAN Qualifications Reference Framework, Outcomes-Based Education, or Understanding by Design. Chat your answers. <laughs> what do you think? Yay, I am seeing now. So everyone the man is. I'll be careful of context clues, okay? I'm, I hope you're familiar with PQF, AQRF, and the others. Okay, most the man are getting the correct answer. In my last lecture, I've been saying, there you go. I'll, I will try to avoid that tonight, okay? 
<laughs> okay, well done. So, correct answer natin is letter A. Okay, Philippine Qualification Framework. Philippine Qualification Framework. So, ano yung keyword natin dyan? It's national. National policy. Okay, so do not tap on others. For example, the ASEAN qualifications. Okay, so this should be if your our country is a member of the ASEAN something. Okay, outcomes based education, aman outcomes based education. These are the competencies. Um, yeah, we've had this. We've talked about this a lot in college. Right, so outcomes based education is that teachers should now focus on the outcome, right? Not only on the results of the exam, but the outcome. If nakuha ba ni student yung competency, okay? And of course, understanding by design. So ibig sabihin yan, if the OBE is the result, understanding by design is the process, okay? So I've learned that from a very one of the most intelligent people that I know as well, our uh, school director when I was in college. So ganon nakasimple yung explanation niya. Okay. So again, here our keyword is national policy. Okay. That's why the answer is letter A. Okay. Ah, qualifications framework. Thank you so much, Wins TV. So there, that's it. <laughs> Let's proceed with number two. I hope everyone got it. Um, again, what I'm trying to master in my lectures are the skill, okay, or is the skill on how to answer. So I will not try to bombard you with a lot of information because that's, that's just depressing. And uh, I'm certain that you've been to a lot of reviews already. You've listened to a lot of lecturers, top-notchers, PhDs, right? And they've given you a lot of information. So this time, let's learn the skill on how to battle the questions when you're in the board exam, okay? So anyway, <laughs> number two. Oh, this is long. So which among the choices correctly defines a course? So this time, we will try to differentiate, okay? And know yung course and the others. So does it include a philosophy, purpose, design, and implementation of a whole program? Or letter B, an integrated series of teaching learning experiences whose ultimate aim is to lead the learners to a particular set of knowledge? Or is it letter C? Thank you so much. We will stay safe. <laughs> letter C, a specification and ordering of content of a course or courses. Or is it letter D, a roadmap of what students need to learn and how it will be done effectively during class time? So chat your answers. What do you think? Ano ba dito yung correct definition ng course? Mm -hmm. So along the way, I'll be giving you tips, okay? And in the end, I'll be enumerate ko yung things that you have to remember. Okay. <laughs> so what is your answer? This is quite long. I will give you time to analyze. Uh, I've listened to other lectures as well, and they were right. Now, it's not only about knowing the answer. It's how you attack the question. That's very important, okay? So again, the board exam is trying to measure how good a teacher you are or you will be. So that's why reflect that on your answers, okay? Anyway, correct answer is letter B. So series of, oh, most actually got the correct answers. <laughs> okay, so an integrated series of teaching, learning, experiences. Okay. So ultimate aim is to lead the learners. In a particular course, they have a goal, okay? If you have a course, there is always a goal. So the, its aim is to lead the learners to a particular set of knowledge. Bakit? Ano ba tong iba? Mm -hmm. So as I've said, my distractors are also useful. They can be possible questions or answers during the board exam because I don't want to waste your time. There you have it. Okay, so uh, the first option, letter A, this is very general. 
So nag include na siya ng philosophy, purposes, design, implementation of the whole, whole program. Yan yung curriculum, okay? So the course was the answer. That was, yeah, the answer. And syllabus naman, uh, specification and ordering of content, okay? And lesson plan, this is the more specific. So roadmap of what students need to learn and how it will be done effectively during class time. During class time. So the letter D or the lesson plan, it's more specific, okay? Curriculum naman, it's very general. Okay, very well. So yes, this is live. Hello, I hope you guys have eaten your dinner. I wala na akong small talk. Last time, last lecture ko kasi was Friday night. And I, keep, I kept on bringing it up na we should all be going out on a Friday night. But here we are, listening. Ngayon Thursday na. <laughs> so advanced. Okay, happy Friday, everyone. I hope kumain na kayo. <laughs> so, next one, number three, okay? This is for English. Which lexical process does the sentence below display? Which lexical process? So, is it Joe? Oh, okay. Example. Joe removed the dust from the desk. And then Joe dusted the desk. So is it conversion? Soliloquy. It's soliloquy, right? If <laughs> Metathesis and palindrome. So which is your answer? Joe removed the dust to Joe dusted. What do we call this one? What lexical process is this? Okay, still most are getting the correct answer. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy, guys. That is so cool. Yes, good evening, good evening. I'm not sure, uh, but I've read an announcement today that the board exam will be on October 2. Is that correct? Instead of September 25, you should check PRC. Because if it's October 2, then that's extra good news for you. You have... A week more, right? Binigyan kayo ng chance ng PRC. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> so this is, okay. Uh, correct answer dito is conversion. Okay. Ah, so tama nga pala. Congrats. <laughs> and very funny. <laughs> so my was supposed to be yung board exam ko was March 2020. Napostpone siya ng, napostpone ng, napostpone hanggang. 2022 na kami nakatake. So, <laughs> nung una, we were all thankful kasi you still have a couple of months hanggang naging years siya. So, we were not very happy about that already. But anyway, it actually gave me enough time. So, exhaust the time that you have right now, okay? Now, answer dito is... Ah, okay. That's really sad. Yung leave, nakaplat na. Oh, that's true. You can ask. I would think companies would consider naman in that case, de ba? So anyway, correct answer is conversion. So ano ba yung conversion? So eto, you use an existing word to another class. Okay? So for example, in this sentence, Joe removed the dust. Yung dust dito is a noun. Right? But suddenly, in the second sentence, it became a verb. Joe dusted the desk. So that's conversion, okay? So you use an existing word to another grammatical structure or another class, probably, and it's still the same spelling and almost same, okay? So that's conversion. Cannot convert Musha, okay? Again, we will not dig deeper or have a complex explanation. So what I want is a very simple explanation kasi because, um, <laughs> uh, okay, thank you for the comments. <laughs> so, uh, yung gusto ko is kahit na pagbalik-balik ta rin yung questions doon, you still, you're still able to answer, okay? In, in Visaya, we have a term for that, but I will not say it. So, Anyway, soliloquy, what is this? So the character speaks his thoughts with no listener. So that's soliloquy. I've never done that. I've, uh, when I was studying, I've done, the, what was that? Monologue and declamation. But I've never done soliloquy. So ito yung example. Hindi ko na lang siya babasahin dramatically. But another thing is yung 
Basilio, Crispin, something like that. Or maybe meron yung listeners, right? But in here, so Romeo or Romeo, so the character speaks his thoughts kahit walang nakikinig, okay? Ano naman yung metathesis? So consonants, switching, position. So for example, yung student magkamali siya, instead na sabihin niya ask, yung nasabi niya ax. So that's metathesis, okay? The phenomenon is called metathesis. Now, <laughs> palindrome is kahit na balik 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 tarin mo yung spelling ng word, it still reads the same. So radar, level, madam, or nurses, run. So even if balik balik tarin mo, it's still the same. Tawag sa phenomenon na yan is palindrome. Okay? So there you go. <laughs> All right. So number four, let's have vocabularies this time. So her fondness of reading mystery novels made her gullible. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng salitang gullible? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So is it letter A, very visible, easily scared, mysterious, or easily persuaded? I received a question and let me review. Ah, okay. So if you say assimilation, so kasama yan sila, metathesis assimilation, yung, uh, it's about prefixes or suffixes, okay? So it, it still adds to the word. It might be a prefix or a suffix. Mm -hmm. So anyway, gullible is, okay, easily persuaded. So, madaling i-persuade, madaling bulahin. Sino madaling bulahin? <laughs> Hindi. We're not. <laughs> so, very visible. Pwede rin itong lumabas. It's difficult word is conspicuous. I hope I read that correctly. Conspicuous. So, again, if you say gullible, it means easily persuaded. So, don't be gullible, okay? Research, research muna. If you're about to join or believe about a thing, okay, don't be gullible. Number five, which is the focus when the student substitutes dad for father? Is it phonology, syntactic, semantic, or pragmatic? Mm hmm. So, yung student papalitan niya ng dad for father. I watched my previous lecture. It lasted for three hours. I think it was because I was really talkative. <laughs> so anyway, to those who are new, so I am Jenny and um, pamain daw ng tanim ko sa likod. <laughs> it's plastic, oy. <laughs> so I'm Jenny. I took the board exam last January. I'm supposed to be, it was 2020. Yep. And yeah, may, I, I major in English. However, the discussion today can be applicable to Gen Ed. And I also have very few Prof Ed questions, okay? So anyway, correct answer is semantic. Very good. So again, if it's semantic, you're related to the word, okay? Semantic talks about the word. So what is phonology? Study of speech sounds. So last time we talked about morphemes and phonemes as well, right? So syntactic naman, it's about grammatical rules and structures. So yung mga punctuation, grammatical errors. Okay, so that's what syntax or syntactic is about. And then pragmatic, pragmatic is... Uh -huh, how the language is used. So again, yung socialization ng speaker, background ng speaker, anong nararamdaman ng speaker when he said that. So that's pragmatic, everyday use. And I think you also discuss pragmatism, right? So the practicality. <laughs> Yan yung keyword ko before with uh, pragmatism. Yeah, the practicality. Okay, so let us proceed. Yay, everyone got the correct answer. I've always had a bangs. Thank you. <laughs> Just the color is new. Yes, Paul, this is English and also uh, Gen Ed English. And also there are some, but really, let's not focus on that, okay? What I'm trying to focus here, I want to show you the intensity of the board exam and what 
kind of skill you need when you're about there and you're gonna answer. So that's what we're gonna focus, okay? Anyway, question number six. What is the following sentence called? So, I deeply apologize for the inconvenience. I deeply apologize for the inconvenience. Is it formal, informal, slang, or jargon? I deeply apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you. I've also heard a lot of yeah overwhelming comments about my voice it's it's only when i speak english okay i think namomodulate naman yung voice natin if we speak another language but really if it's bisaya you'll be if it's bisaya you'll be disappointed <laughs> okay so what is your answer anong classing sentence ba yon? i deeply apologize for the inconvenience it's formal so as we can see Hello, Mike. So as we can see here, mm -hmm, um, the approach or the approach of the sentence, uh, sobrang taas ng uh, uh, respect or something like. So when formal language, kasi it's standard. So it's when we're writing letters, when we're talking to people of positions. Yeah, such as, of course, maybe in the government and the politics or our bosses. So it should be formal, right? When do we use informal? When? Okay, it should be casual and spontaneous. So when you are with people that you are comfortable with. So I would say that you're with people not comfortable with. I cannot directly say family or friends because not everyone among is comfortable with their family or friends, right? So informal tayo when we're with yeah, we're, we're just ourselves, right? Now, what is slang? Hello. <laughs> so what is slang? This is used by people who belong in the same group. Okay. So for example, yung, for example, ang slang are yung athletes. So they have this term, tawag natin. I didn't include it in the slide. I'm sorry. So athletes have this term, uh, goat. So what does that mean? So maybe some other normal people, we know goat as an animal, right? But for athletes, goat means greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Yes. So um, for, I'm, I'm a big fan of NBA nga pala. And I would often fight with some people because they love MJ or Kobe. And I always believe that LeBron James is the goat. So slang, yung goat is slang siya, okay? So used by people who belong in the same group. Now, what is jargon? So <laughs> this is used by people who belong in the same, sorry about the typo, the same profession. So for example, for us teachers, o ano ba yung jargon natin? Um, uh, formative assessment, summative assessment, Kung makipag-usap ka sa mga kaibigan mong hindi teachers, makipag-usap ka about lesson plan, of course they'll be confused, right? So it's the same if we talk about with if we talk with doctors, they talk about hypertension. So uh, us normal people, we we don't really understand that quite well. So yan yung jargon. <laughs> Famous example ko is yung Roger, 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 right? So for us normal people, we say copy. But in a certain profession, they call it Roger. So that's jargon, okay? So anyway, formal again is standard. Yes. <laughs> Ay, may hindi nag-agree sa aking Lebron James. Okay. Uh, wala pang next season. Ah, malapit na yung preseason, guys. Uh, after the board, take muna kayo ng board exam. Tapos usap tayo NBA, okay? <laughs> Number seven, on what purpose do we have the Filipino folk narratives for? So Filipino, Filipino folk narratives. Is it letter A, to explain the natural phenomena, to honor the gods, to teach proper behavior, or to ward off evil spirits? Okay. So for the others, uh, I heard like if it's a bit blurry on your end, there's like a setting, the three dots that you will click, and then don't you click yung high quality para hindi po maging blurred, hopefully. Okay, so what is the purpose of okay, or on what purpose do we have the Filipino folk narratives for? 
This is to letter A, explain the natural phenomena, okay? So if we notice the stories like before, so they talk about where do plants, fruits came from, the thunder, the rainbow. So yeah, that's what they are for, to explain the natural phenomena, okay? So I would say kasi some here, some of the choices might fall under um, superstitious beliefs, yeah? But here for Filipino, Filipino folk narratives, it should be for or to explain the natural phenomena. By the way, I'm sorry about the typo. It's only less than a week since I have to lecture again. I also checked my previous lecture. Sobrang daming posts and I'm reading the comments. Yeah, thank you so much for pointing that out. Anyway, let's proceed. Number eight. Which, okay, this one is very helpful. Which of the following does not represent the concept of a washback? wash back what do we know about that so anyway letter a a test may influence what teachers teach and how they teach their students or letter b the use of the test influences language learners letter c what is tested does not affect what is taught or letter d it is the correction between testing and learning what are your answers Okay, thank you so much. So chat your answers now, everyone. Does not. Okay, be careful sa, yeah, words like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we should be thankful to Sir Melvin, right? Like the channel is able to reach out, you know, the entire country. That's really good. Especially to those people who are doing self-study. It, it's really helpful. I did self-study for two years. The review center ako, but because our exam was postponed for like postponed whatever that is for two years, so yeah, I self studied and the channel was a really good help. Okay, so correct answer is I think everyone got the correct answer. So what is tested does not affect what is taught. That's just it. So why? What is a washback? Okay, so. Let's dig a little bit about that. So if you sabi nating washback, ito yung relationship ng teaching process at ng test. Okay? So do you remember your teachers when you were studying? Sasabihin nila, makinig kayo kasi lalabas to sa exam. Alright? Makinig kayo kasi lalabas to sa exam. So it's the relationship of the teaching process and the test. So the teaching mirrors the test because teachers want teachers want the students to get good grades, okay? And we have different <laughs> kasi my word na does not. Nice. <laughs> so we have two different okay kinds. So we have the positive washback. So expected test results. So Kapag yung assessment, nagbigay siya ng good teaching experience, that's really good. Ano naman yung negative washback? So, opposite, unexpected test result. So, ano ba yung example ng negative washback? So, for example, um, I, I told my students na, okay, I want my students to be good in speaking. So, kaya... Plano kong if final exam is, let's just say, uh, an, an oral recitation. Or, yeah, an oral recitation. So, yan yung plano kong exam. Because I want them to be good speakers. Now, ano nangyayari? While on the teaching process, the students are memorizing their recitation. So, na-meet ko ba yung goal ko na gusto ko silang maging magaling na speaker? No. Because they were just memorizing, right? So, that's the negative washback. So, there is a mismatch between the instruction and the assessment. So, instead na they will study on how to be, become good speakers, eh, nag-memorize lang sila. So, okay, yan yung washback. So, here the answer is, yung hindi nag-represent ng concept ng washback is, what is tested does not affect what is taught. Okay? Yes! So that's correct. So, Mom J, and what was assessed become what was taught. Nice. Okay. <laughs> now, let us proceed. Okay, board exam tip. Oh, there you go. My first board exam tip. So, a way to eliminate or find the most odd option is to question all the choices. 
So, baligta rin naman natin this time kung talagang nahihirapan kayo. So, you question all the choices if it answers to the question. Okay? So, if we can see here, for example, kung wala ka talagang alam, alam what a washback is, so you can look at, right? Yung lagi yang sasabihin ni uh, Sir Melvin yung odd one out. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the concept, yeah. But anyway, for you to figure out, so ano yung naiiba, or what could be the right answer, you question all the choices, okay? So it's also a way to eliminate. So if you believe na it does not answer to the question at all, then you can eliminate that, okay? There you go. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you so much for the comments. Oh, that's so good. So again, yung blurry for them, you go to settings and then you click quality daw or meron yung 720p something. You, you can navigate on your devices. Next, number nine. What should the teacher consider first prior to doing the remedial instruction? Is it plan the remedial exercises, prepare the materials, evaluate the effectiveness of the activities, or figure out the student's difficulty? Mm -hmm. So what should the teacher consider first bago siya mag remedial instruction? So be careful. You can question all the options. Diba? So you can see if they answer to the question anyway along the way and the thing is you really reach out to people uh, i think that works a lot for me so yung lpts naman hindi lang dalawa o tatlo right there were a lot you have friends you have classmates professors new dati that became lpts you ask them okay well, what's a good thing to do while you're reviewing and when you are about to take the board exam and also it's a good thing that you're attending lectures I wish I had this before. Okay, so everyone got the correct answer. It should be letter D. So figure out the student's difficulty. Actually, okay naman yung A, B, or C. But how will you fulfill them if you don't know which part ka babanat, right? Which part you will fill in with the student. So before doing a remedial instruction, you must learn first. San, okay, or which part is the student's difficulty? It's letter D, okay? I think, yeah, this one is really good. <laughs> In my previous lecture, a lot of were complaining, but this time everyone got it now. And also, I think that's what happens when you review a lot, when you take a lot of Mac mock exams. So you'll know already how to answer. And that's really helpful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> please ask questions there are just a lot of comments kasi it keeps on moving up so i cannot really acknowledge anyway so campus journalism the mast head refers to is it editor-in-chief of the newspaper name of the newspaper bylines or nose for news what do we mean by masthead or yeah what does the masthead refer to so is it A, B, C, or D? Mm -hmm. Chat your answers. Okay, well done. So most really got... Some of you here are... Uh, I'm sure some are retakers, right? Uh, you know, it, it breaks my heart too. But the result kasi, it's not 100%. Hindi naman talaga lahat nakakapasa. And that's why we do our best while we are reviewing, right? Like, I've also had classmates who did not make it. So instead, now you will enjoy. Yeah, we'll, 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 our hearts will break for them. So to those retakers, uh, I commend you for that. But yeah, God bless you. Uh, it's kasi because, you know, when you guys, when you fail the board exam, you don't just fail. People will label you, Okay. Pwede kayo label na, bobo siya, let the exam lang, hindi pa napasang, dali-dali lang yan. And that's hard, okay? That, that will become part of your identity. And I know mahirap siya. So, I, I commend you for that. I know people, as, as I said before, yung friend of our family, six times he took the board exam. Like, that, that's a lot of strength. Ako hindi ko kaya. I'm not that strong. If I fail one, siguro ayoko na. 
If I fail twice, ayoko na talaga. Right? So, guys, you're so strong. Just keep going. Uh, what did not work before, you can try a, uh, try a different approach this time. Okay? So, anyway. Uh, ano ba yung sagot? Wag na tayo mag-dramatic. Yeah. Right? So, some of you here, puro teachers yung family. Right? So, I'm not pressuring you, but pressure builds diamonds. And yeah, really, if you fail, you don't just fail. People will label you. And it's not that those people matter, but it will hurt you, actually. So be careful. Now, okay, it refers to the topic. So masthead, ito yung name of the newspaper, okay? And yeah, as well as other, but ito yung talaga yung pinaka-important, the name of the newspaper. So ano ba yung bylines? The yung benefit niya is the popularity. So for example, um, so for example, pag ang nagsulat ng article is si Alden Richards, is sobrang sikat ni Alden Richards, so marami yung babasa na article. So if it's in the article and then pangalan ni Alden Richards, of course we will re- a lot of people will read, okay? Because he's famous. So yan yung byline. Sinusulat kung sino yung author. Benefit niya is really popularity. Ano naman yung nose for news? Okay, this is the newsman's sixth sense. Okay, no super news. But anyway, masthead, we will see there the name of the paper. Okay, very well. So it's letter B. Seed with number 11. Okay, so language learning is all about the process an individual undergoes as he learns a language. Which of the following describes language learning best? So, alin dito? Yung nagdidis- yun lang yung tanong. Alin dito yung nagdidescribe ng language learning? So, it usually happens in a natural manner. It is always a constructive process. It is usually with people who live in another country and learn their language. Or it can occur either in a formal or non-constructive process. Okay, so it should. Wait, what are your answers, guys? All right, let's see. Yeah, I know, I know. So uh, make sure that this is the last time that you're going to take it, okay? So really, it also really scared me as well. As much as ayaw natin mag ng negative, pero hindi natin siya, especially pag like, papalapit na. And the most scary, the scariest part talaga is uh, the, yung results time. And it's either or not you will see your name on the list. So anticipate I anticipated that feeling a lot. Para hindi ako masyadong mashak. Yeah. That's why what it's important. So naging moto ko when I review is to always give it your hundred percent. Okay, give it your hundred percent. In nagtake ka na, nag effort ka na, bumayad ka na ng review center, just give it your best shot. Para wala kang pagsisisihan after. And I think it applies not only in board exam, so like in other aspects of your life as well. Your mall, your relationships, so you give it your 100%. At kung hindi talaga ibigay sa'yo for you, kasi ginawa mo na ang lahat, di ba? So it's what I thought about. I give it my 100% and I was like, okay, Lord, uh, I give it my 100%. So if you give it to me, that, that's mine. Kung hindi naman, then hindi siya para sa akin kasi binigay ko na lahat. It's the same with relationships, right? Anyway, answer number 11 is... <laughs> I have a friend here, by the way. Nagpasama ko. So, uh, the answer is it can occur either in a formal or non-constructive process. So, ano ba yung non-constructive? Formal or informal, okay? Language learning, not all the times in a natural manner, not all the times you learn it in the four corners of the classroom, not all the time na yun lang na, pum, uh, who lived in another country and learned their language. No. So language learning can occur either in a formal or in an informal process. It's letter D. Okay. So, yun, yeah. <laughs> okay, very well. Now, I have another board exam tip, I think. Okay, so mind the keywords, synonyms, and adverbs. That's why it's important that you actually understand the question. Read it twice or three times as much as possible. Para wala kang ma-miss. 
again, the lesson that I've learned from Sir Melvin when I was reviewing is uh, magkamali ka hindi dahil sa katangahan. Okay? Magkamali ka dahil hindi mo lang talaga alam. So that's why be careful with the questions because they can be tricky sometimes. So if you can see here in the options, I think, yeah, in letter B, it is always. So yeah, it, it can change the meaning a lot. So be mindful of adverbs and synonyms na ginagamit, okay? All right, so yes, papa sa tayong lahat. Okay, so let's proceed with number 12. For remedial language learners, what should be the next step? in order to expand their basic understanding of the English language. So it should be to organize sentences into a paragraph, practice writing scripts and speeches, creating poems, or forming complex sentences. So, okay. <laughs> what are your answers? Yes, thank you. <laughs> For those, I'm not a DJ po. It's modulate. I, when you speak another language, na modulate yung voice mo. But if I speak Bisaya, it's really different. Yep. Although I want, really want to become a DJ, I had the chance before, pero hindi ako pinayagan ng aking super mom. That's why. <laughs> Correct answer is, okay, this time, panalo yung distractors. Oh, 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 actually, no, some are still, so a lot are still answering the correct answer. So why is it letter A ba? It's because of the basic understanding. So imagine a remedial language learner sila, you're trying to expand their basic understanding. Are you going to let them write scripts and speeches? Let them create poems or form complex sentences? A basic panga. So that's why uh -huh, to expand their knowledge, you should let them organize sentences into a paragraph. So question all the choices. And that's how you'll get to the correct answer. Okay? <laughs> okay, so someone's asking me to speak, Bisaya. No. <laughs> Everyone will be disappointed. So anyway... Mm -hmm. Which method specifies a deep examination of the usage of grammar in second language teaching? Again, this is not only major in English, okay? This is for everyone. Because what I'm trying to teach you is the intensity of the board exam and how you are going to battle the correct, or yeah, the, the difficult questions, how you're going to find the correct answer. Yep. So, and I'll be giving tips along the way that, that really worked for me and I hope will work for you as well. Okay, so which method specifies deep examination of grammar? It is. Okay, so yay, most answered thirsty. The answer is in the question. So deep examination, it's not direct. It's not suggestopedia, lalong hindi total physical response. It's grammar translation method. So there are different theories or strategies kasi in, in language teaching and language learning. So these are some, okay? So the answer is in the question. There you go. Ano yung direct approach? Focuses on oral skills. So direct yung pagkaturo. Total physical response naman, TPR, is... Oral, kapag AU na oral, that's about your hearing, okay? And kinesthetic. So, for example, kapag sabihin natin, kapag sabihin natin, um, stand up. So, yung bata, nakinig siya and tumayo siya. Or open the door. So, yung bata, uh, binuksan niya yung door. So, that's total physical response, okay? It's what you hear and, okay, the body movement as well. So, just to pedia, however, this is, Okay, parang na out of place yung suggestopedia, but let me explain still. Learners learn when they are relaxed and interested. Okay, so suggestopedia is, is that, that kind of approach na, for example, do you remember your teachers before? Instead of merely teaching, is nagpapa games sila. So that's an example of suggestopedia. So when we are enjoying, so we learn more, right? And according to Plato, um, what is learned under compulsion does not stay i'm not sure if that's correct ba? so what is learned and the thought is what do you learn under compulsion does not stay in the mind 
So, for example, yung kids that are forced to learn, yung pinapalo sila or pinapagalitan sila, they don't learn at all. Okay? They don't learn at all. So, marirelate na lang nila yung, that's why every time they start to study, hindi pa nga sila inaano, is umiiyak na sila. Kasi yung naiisip nila, mag-aaral na naman kami, papagalitan na naman ako. So, it does not work that way. Okay? So, suggestopedia is a really good thing. So, we learn best when we're relaxed and we were, when we are interested, right? I had a really good professor in college and we really like his class. Because we were learning, but at the same time, like, we, we love the process. So, that's an example. So, anyway, sagot dito is grammar translation method, okay? So, <laughs> board exam tip, oh, ito na. The answer is in the question. Number 14, this hypothesis proposes that motivation, self-confidence, and anxiety affect how a person learns a language. Which hypothesis is referred to? Is it monitor, effective filter, natural order, or input? Mm -hmm. So chat your answers. What do you think? So yeah, God bless you, a major ships, you my mom major, even the, yeah. Gen Ed or Prof Ed, God bless you. I had a friend who became a top notcher. Um, it was so Sir Melvin was our co uh, te uh, speaker in our final coaching, and yeah, one of us became a top not. My friend became a top notcher. So partly thanks to Sir Melvin as well. And now you're here. Sino yung susunod or who will be the next LPTs and top notchers? It's here in this live, right? Okay, a clarification lang po, I am not a top notcher, ah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, since I, I've, I grew up with that, you know, when I was in high school, a lot of people asked me if I graduated valedictorian in elementary. The same goes when I was in first year college. No, like fourth year college ako, everyone asked if I graduated with Latin honors. <laughs> and also so a no and now every people are asking about that too if i top my board exam yeah well i did not but still i made it so yun na if you fail to hit the moon you will land among the stars right so aim to top guys now correct answer dito is letter b effective filter hypothesis okay so bucket if you look at the words motivation self-confidence and anxiety so it's all about what's inside you it's all about affective right ano ba yung okay here you go Nandito nang pala eh. thank you thank you ppt so monitor hypothesis so consciously learning the rules so if you say consciously intentionally Inaalam nila yung rules. So, I know a lot of people sobrang galing if they talk about grammar. Sobrang galing. But if you let them speak English, they cannot. Okay? So, because they consciously just learn the rules but does not apply it. Okay? If you say effective filter, concerned with the motivational aspect, kapag natural order naman, okay, the natural sequence. So, when, when you were kids, you started learning, right? An input hypothesis focuses on acquisition over time and not learning. Okay? So, okay, Sir Melvin, marami daw nagbe-message sa'yo. Okay, please notice them. <laughs> anyway, correct answer is effective filter hypothesis. Okay? Next one, number 15. What is an integral part? of Chinese classical drama. This is a board exam question. Lumabas po ito. So please try answering. Is it culture, language, presentation, or movement? Again, expect questions like this. Questions you never met before. Questions you've never studied. Vocabularies that you never knew. Yeah, some of them will go out. So don't expect na alam mo lahat doon, okay? The, the thing is, you believe in yourself, but don't be too overconfident. Kasi if you're overconfident and nagiging relaxed ka na. So, you, you don't work hard, right? So, believe in yourself but don't be too overconfident. Do your part as well. I have classmates ha, na sobrang relaxed nila and they still made it. They still passed the boards. They arrived in on, in the examination center late and I know for sure na hindi sila nag-aral and they were just laughing but still they made it. So, yeah, congrats. But it's not for everyone. 
So believe in yourself, but don't be too overconfident, okay? Uh, diba? Tamang sagot dito is, actually, this is surprising. It's movement, okay? So uh, when, when I research uh, Chinese classical dramas, kasi they, they do a lot with theater, plays, something like that. So movement is very important to them, okay? So some of the distractors will be tone, setting, ganon. But if it's a Chinese classical drama, always answer movement, okay? Next one, number, okay, 16. Ah, this is a bonus question, guys. So can be asked in Gen Ed as well. What is the function of gerund? What is the function of the gerund in the given sentence? Reading is my favorite hobby. Is it as a verb, a positive, direct object, or subject? Mm-hmm. What do you think is the answer? So reading is my favorite hobby. Yay! Mostly. Yay! Virtual hugs, everyone. Congratulations in advance. <laughs> Sometimes maiiyak ka while you're reviewing. Yeah, it happened to me a lot. Kasi what if you fail? <laughs> diba? But you will not. You will not. Okay? And for the retakers, uh, figure out what went wrong in the first part and then try a different approach. Okay? And that really, really, we're all human beings. Yeah. But yeah, aim to pass, aim to top. That's what I aim, actually, to top it. <laughs> it was the first time that I was very intentional. Uh, that's why I did not graduate with anything because I really don't like exams. As I said before, in fact, I, I, I disagree with the board exam because I know naman na it does not measure the teacher's ability to teach. Like I know na I had I had LPT. Yeah, I had teachers who are LPTs, but for me, hindi sila masyadong magaling magturo. And I'm sure na there are a lot who failed, pero magaling sila magturo. That that's, was my mentality. But part pala ng board exam, it will measure how good you are as a teacher. So, yeah, be conscious or be careful with your answers, okay? So, anyway, correct answer dito is, yep, everyone got it. It's a subject. So, ano ba yung a positive? It modifies a, a certain noun, okay? So, for example, this one, Jenny, along with her friends, is eating lunch. Oh, bakit is yan, hindi are? It's because we don't consider friends kasi a positive lang yan, okay? Jenny is eating lunch, okay? You can disregard it. Direct object is the receiver of the action. So the students eat cake. Anong kinain ng students? Cake. So receiver ng verb. That's a direct object, okay? Gerund, guys, can function in many different ways. So pwede siyang subject. Reading. So my ing is my hobby. Or Jenny is speaking as a verb. Or adjective naman, I find the movie very interesting. So again, be careful. Mind the keywords, synonyms, and yeah, and verbs. So words like this, pwede silang i, yeah, i, i balik balik tad. So be careful, okay? Oh, we have unit earners as well. Now let me tell you this, ah. Proceed muna ako sa next question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> before we talk. So the world's a stage, and all men and women are merely players. Which figure of speech is used? Is it metonymy, synecdoche? A simile or metaphor so chat your answers um ano ba so unit earners that, that, that's difficult kasi talagang hindi nyo pinag-aralan ng four years yung education but my sister so hrm yung course niya and talagang gustong gusto niya magturo so she okay she, she took the board exam once so paglabas ng results niya i was still i think fourth year college that time we were so happy kasi pangarap niya talaga maging teacher kahit HRM siya. But I was happy at the same time I was scared. Kaya nga sinasabi ko sa inyo, pressure builds diamonds. So it, it was one of my made, of the things that made me work hard as well. Kasi unit earner siya but she passed it once. So, di ba? Paano na tayo nag-aaral ng apat na taon? So, yeah, that's it. Anyway, correct answer is... Yay! So as we can see, kaya nga in the last time, I did not include simile, metaphor, irony, hyperbole, personification because they were quite basic. But anyway, so it metaphor kasi, ano yung metaphor? Direct comparison, right? The world's a stage. Ah, if we say you are the love of my life, sarapaking gan. Okay, let us hear what is a metonymy. It's a representation, okay? 
So, kapag sabihin natin, you have all my heart. So, heart there means love. It's synecdoche man. It's part of a whole. So, for example, I am taking the wheel. Hindi ibig sabihin yung wheel lang yung, is the one that you're taking. It means you're driving. Ibig sabihin ng wheel dyan is a car, okay? Kapag sabihin natin, give me your, ah, uh, lend me a hand. So, hindi ibig sabihin hand lang. Our representation is you help them or ask your hand for marriage as well. So, those are examples of synecdoche. As for simile, it's just as or like. Yeah, it's very common, very common. I, I really did not include this lecture. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you include it now? Okay. Because this is a review. Let's continue. Oh, my. What is the original name of Dante's Divine Comedy? Is it Comedia, Divina Comedia, La Comedia, or Inferno? So, Divine Comedy. Yung mer Ah, I did not search about this one. Yung merong um, heaven, right? Paradiso, Purgatorio, and Inferno. So, it, it's like a set of... I really want to read things like this, but I feel like it's beyond my mental capacity. And what's really scary there is that in this in this work, there are different levels of hell. And yung naalala ko lang is... The deepest part of hell are to those who remain neutral in terms of crisis. So, level, level pala yung imperno. So, yeah, parang there's a part where, where you go to hell when you cheat, when you do that, right? When you're corrupt or something. So, the deepest part is to those who remain neutral in terms of crisis. Anyway, the answer is, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So this time, gumagana ang distractors. Simply and originally, it's just comedia. Okay? So kapag sabihin nating La Divina Comedia, it's just the Italian translation. Actually, I got this one correctly kaya sobrang saya ko. Because I also just answered comedia as well. So it's the simplest and the original title of Divine Comedy. It's letter A. Okay? All right. Yes, congratulations to those who got it. Next one, number 19. The teacher is using the task-based strategy. What learning experience should he follow? So should he use grammatical structures correctly? Identify the figurative languages? Recalling supporting details? Writing notes, memos, or reports? I'm sorry if there are typos because I had less than a week. Ayan, sobrang gulo, -gulo na yung aking utak. <laughs> but really, just like you, I only listened to Sir Melvin as well before. And I was so happy that I found his channel. It was a great help. Mm -hmm. So anyway, correct answer is, and I hope every day, right now you have, yeah, less than a month. So I hope every day you're, you're trying to answer 50 to 100 items every day. And as much as possible, just to answer both questions, okay? Para mapatis yung utak. Another thing kasi, you know, you will answer 450 questions in one day. Marami yan. And nakakapawad siya. Another test in the board exam is if you will survive. If you will survive answering a lot of questions, di ba? Alam niyo yung nakaka-exhausting talaga is kapag always something ang ating utak. That's very exhausting. Kasi if you're physically tired, you can just sleep. Or you can just take a quick break, right? But if you're mentally tired, drain lahat. So you have to practice answering questions para ma-practice kayo. I mean, yeah, ma-master nyo na when you arrive there, hindi kayo madaling mapagod, okay? And remember, if ma-mental block ka, so for example, you read the question tapos pa na talagang maintindihan, you pause, you close your eyes, you breathe, you pray, whatever, just pause for a while, don't continue answering, okay? Huwag mong idamay lahat ng lahat ng items. Again, every item matters. Okay? They, they will make you... An, one item makes all the difference. Okay? It can either fail you, pass you, or make you a top notcher. So, if you're mental block, if you're drained, pause while you're in the board exam or while you're answering. Okay? Wag mong idama yung ibang items. If you're ready, then restart. Okay? 
Anyway, <laughs> everyone got the correct answer still. Task-based is writing notes, memos, and reports. Again, kapag sabihin natin task-based, this is an authentic activity. So, papupuntahin nyo sila sa labas. Okay, they let them conduct interviews. So, that's task-based strategies. You see A, B, and C. So, use, identify, or recall. Okay, it's they're not task-based. So, read carefully. The answer is in the question. Question all the choices, okay? Number 20. Oh, oh, here you go. More exam tip. Nandito pala siya. Practice your reading comprehension. So, if you're someone na mahilig ang magbasa, just like me, it's a great, great advantage kasi hindi yun na madaling mapagod yung utak mo. Okay? So, as to me, I can read, I can read a book ju just, an entire day. Kahit wala akong ibang gawin, it's okay. Hindi ako napapagod dyan. So that's an advantage that I have. But we don't, uh, not, not every one of us is gusto magbasa. So right now, you should practice your reading comprehension. You can start with the most basic. I would suggest, kahit na one month long, read the newspaper every day. Hindi lang yung, yung may celebrity parts, ha? You read the headlines, everything. So for one month, read the newspaper every day. Every morning. Really, it's one way to support local at ano ba, yung newspaper, it's using our language. So it's very easy to read. Okay, so that's a way of practicing your reading comprehension. And it was a part of my life where I read the news every day. Right now, every week lang because I don't have time. Makakalimutan ko siya. But before, uh, yeah, my, my mentality actually improved significantly. Kasi you will know what's happening around your locality and namamaster mo rin yung understanding mo. So if you're not someone na mahilig magbasa, one way to start is read the newspaper every day. For one month lang, until the board exam. Try it. So practice your reading comprehension, okay? Right now, everything you do should relate to the left. Okay? <laughs> Wala kang gagawin na hindi relate sa let. So, now let's talk more about that. Pero next question muna. Number 20, I was walking in the middle of the street when suddenly, boom, there was a loud, napaka-boring ng aking boom. There was a loud explosion. Imagine ninyo na lang. Which word is an example of onomatopoeia? Is it boom, loud, explosion, or suddenly? Chat your answers. So, ano na yun? Yeah, that, but that's what I was saying. You read the newspaper. So, everything that you should, you, you're doing right now should uh, be related to the board exam. Okay? So, if you read, as to me as well, it's, it's how I started exercising because I really want to pass. So, they say if you exercise, if you take a jogging or hiking, maganda rin siya sa utak. Okay, and the food that you eat. So, anong pinapasok mo sa loob kasi? It, it's what displays outside. Okay, meron siyang result. So, make sure to eat eat healthy as much as possible. Okay, wag yung too much things that are bad for your body. O, pagkatapos ng board exam, magwalwal ka kahit anong gagawin mo. But for now, okay, focus, guys. Correct answer is, yes, letter A. We all know what onomatopoeia is. It's boom. So, anything na merong literal sound, that's onomatopoeia, okay? Next one, what does Dios ex machina literally mean? Is it the days ahead, God from the machine, an unexpected machine, or the days behind? Again, Dios ex machina, what does it literally mean? Chat your answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope we all have this one. Okay. <laughs> I had this actually. When my family looked at the results, they did not find my name. So there was one, nakapareha ng family name ko, but it was not my name. So they were devastated at hindi nila ko tinawagan or what. Because they thought that I did not make it, you know. And so <laughs> they were crying while eating their dinner. It. They said it was the worst dinner that they've ever had like sometimes nagka crash yung link or yung list ng prc so make sure to check properly when you check okay and yeah uh, how, as for to me how did i find out that i i was able to message me congratulations yun lang <laughs> took them for a while to send that Anyway, correct answer is this is actually god from the machine or tinatawag nating divine intervention 
So, saan ba yan na-apply? For example, yung story ng Little Red, it's not literal na nandyan si Gada, pero for example, yung story ng Little Red Riding Hood, di ba, yung wolf ba yun, kinain na yung grandmother niya? And then tendency is supposed to be si Little Red Riding Hood naman yung susunod na kakainin. However, dumating yung tatay niya with an axe. So that's divine intervention, right? Like someone from the above sent a miracle or something to defeat the enemy. Excuse me. So stories can can go like that. There is like, yeah, a divine intervention. So someone from the above sent a miracle to help the plot. So that's the yes ex machina, okay? <laughs> yes, exactly. Some don't have basis, just really divine intervention. So some really don't use this one, okay? But anyway, that's what that means. God from the machine. Number 22. The teacher wants to have an intensive drill of basic sentence patterns. What should he do? Should he explain the rules of grammar? Should he designate writing tasks, do pattern practice, or demonstrate the lesson? Yes, I'll PT soon. That's so cool. I'm sure some of you are teaching already, right? In private, they say nga it's a huge advantage na nagtuturo ka na tapos you will take the board exam because you will learn a lot for pro ed and you will study a lot for gen ed while you're having your lessons. So yeah, I'll make, make use of it. But make use of what you have, okay? Yeah, I do. I did po, ma'am. So, I sorry, I, I don't I want to acknowledge every comment, but sobrang bilis kasi ng pag-moving up niya. But anyway, yeah, I that's what I did. I practiced every day. At least 50 to 100 items I answer and I never got the score that I wanted. So, if I answer 100 items, yung aim ko talaga is makakuha ko at least 80 man lang. But I never got that. I only got 50 or 60, sometimes 40. And then I study my wrong answers and bakit ko yung pinili at bakit yung correct answer is yung correct answer. So that's how you'll figure out na, ah, okay. So iba pala yung approach ko kesa sa approach ng PRC. So figure those things out, okay? Correct answer is, okay, the answer is in the question. It's talking about basic sentence pattern. So you do pattern practice okay <laughs> so again drill of basic sentence pattern so you will do pattern practice it's just a drill okay so you'll do pattern practice now let's proceed with number 23 which of the following approaches can we use to study the texts of the bible so is it hermeneutics semiotics formalistic or dialogic some of the words I will mispronounce. Ha? I'm so sorry about that. I'm not used to reading from the slides kasi. If I speak in front of many, pe many people, it's just speaking. And if I read naman, I just read on my own. So reading in front of many people is not so cool to me. There were a lot of words <laughs> that I mispronounce. And sometimes I read words that are not there. It, I don't know if it's a reading deficiency but it, it happened to me a lot. So, naging problema ko rin yan when I took the board exam kasi I don't know what goes on with my brain. Talagang merong words na wala sa text but nakikita ko. So, okay. Alright, so everyone got the correct answer. It's hermeneutics. What's it? Science of interpretation. So, usually about the Bible or something. So, ano ba yung semiotics? They are symbols. So, logo, signs, gesture, linguistic or non-linguistic, okay? Now, again, I am trying to make this as simple as possible para kahit pagbalik-balik tarin kayo doon, when you meet the words, at least you will have the idea, okay? At kung hindi mo alam yung sagot, you can use context clues. So, that's a really good help already. I want to be the lecturer that I never had when I was reviewing. That's why. So, I'm trying to show you the, the real thing. Hindi lang yung... Yeah, bubuhusan kayo ng sobrang daming information. No. Because it's, yeah. So, the real thing. Now, formalistic, it's scientific approach to literature. This is a bit complicated. Um, Yung focus nito is yung settings, how the story is written. So, it's not really interpreting the meaning. It's just the format, the plot, the plot, rather. So, scientific approach to literature. And then we have dialogic. So, learning through, participating in, 
conversations. Okay. Yes, there you go. So, yeah, you can take notes of some. Thank you to those. <laughs> All right. So, the next question, number 24. This is known as the era of decadence, a literary movement that is against realism or naturalism. So, is this medieval literary period, new criticism, symbolism, or modern period? The era of decadence. So, what are your answers? Chat it. Yes, laban para sa pangarap. <laughs> so, yung goal natin dito is, ako, when I took the board exam, what I thought about is not, the end goal is not really to get my license, but, you know, inspire a lot of people. I, I really want to become a teacher, a professor, a teacher in the future. So, yun yung naging inspiration ko. It does not stop on your license, okay? Once you get your license, mas malaki yung responsibility mo. Meron siyang expiration date and you have to pay, by the way. But your end goal should be like, it, yeah. Because I, I want to be, I really want to become a teacher. That's why I knew that I will be disappointed if I failed, not only because I studied hard, but it, it's one of my goals too. So you, it does not stop on, okay? Anyway, era of decadence. Remember, guys, keyword natin dito is against realism siya. Right. Siguro if there's aestheticism, that will be your answer. That would have been a good distractor as well. But aestheticism is art for art's sake. Okay. So for aestheticism, it doesn't matter. Yung politics, yung opinions. It's just arts for art's sake. Answer dito is symbolism. Okay. So symbol, right? It's against realism. Ano ba yung sa medieval literary period? It's usually divine and spiritual so in this period they were so full of prayers and faith things like that new criticism naman it is against intertextuality so preference ng new criticism is close reading right so ayaw nila yung maraming meanings okay for modern period so it's um, it's believed that na nagsimula yung modern period during the French Revolution because it's when they started improving the government, improving the system. Okay? But for the era of decadence, ano ba yung decadence? It's like luxury. Okay? So against realism or naturalism, it's symbolism. Okay? So that's number 24. Next one. Okay, let's have reading process this time. So... What is the exact sequence? Is it reading, exploring, preparing to read, extending, responding? Oh, <laughs> it's not pala. So you choose from A, B, C, or D. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much to those I get. The... But really, this speaking voice and singing voice, they're different, guys. And some may be wondering, if we have different... Uh, speaking is my forte kasi that's why. Okay, so I, I really want to do it and and teach. So, so sometimes people can be, can be, people can know a lot of things, but they don't know how to worse. Okay, so Melvin, I cannot see myself. Full. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, chat your answers still. Is it okay? A, B, C, or D? So I hope Sir Melvin is there. I could not see myself. I hope you guys can see me. <laughs> okay. Andito na, bumalik na. Oh, oh, so it's in the lower part. That's why. Anyway, correct answer is... Ah, it's okay now. Thank you, sir. So correct answer is letter A. Well done to those who answered letter A. So, ano yun? Do not, do not answer unless you have last two options, right? So, of course, yung mauna dito is preparing to read. So, i-remove na natin yung letter B and letter D, right? So, we will battle between A or C. But the correct answer is letter A. So, this is it. I will give you a clear, okay? So, first one is preparing to read. So, as a teacher, uh, it's when the time that you give background about the story that you're about to have or you're about to discuss. So, you can also discuss in this part yung difficult vocabularies. 
So if you are to read Cinderella, for example, you can ask questions there about their favorite Disney story, whatever. So that's preparing to read, giving them the background and the difficult words, okay? And finally, the students will be reading this time. So in the reading part, there are many types, but again, I don't want to bombard you with information. At, they're a bit easy naman. So like individual reading, body reading, bayon, group or peer reading. So it's the reading part, magbabasa na sila. After reading, they will be responding. So we will try to evaluate this time, anong natutunan nila in what they read, okay? So are there lessons of the story? Okay, and if they understood the story well. After that, after responding, after evaluating, what they have understood is they can explore. So anong ibig sabihin nun? They can reread the story and find out difficult words na nahirapan sila. Or maybe figure out why the author wrote that or what's the purpose. Okay, and then, of course, extending is this time what they create based on what they read. So are they going to write about it? Are they going to read uh, the same uh, the same genre, for example? So what they do about what they learn, okay? It's extending. So this is the reading process. To those who love reading, really, it's a good, ad take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. I do as well. <laughs> but if we talk about that, okay, hanggang bukas mag-uusap pa rin tayo about the books that I read. But anyway, so to those uh, who are non-readers, I understand that. I, I, my friends and family, they are non-readers as well. So I can suggest Now you, you, you read newspaper for one month, every day for one month. Anyway, madali lang siya. Newspaper is either Bisaya or Tagalog, right? If you love, you can choose English as well. But you, let's choose. Dahil starting nga lang. So let's choose the easy one. Yes. Anyway, number 26, what is the best way to prepare for the teaching of literature? Is it enjoy the literature, select a literary work that relates to the nature of the learners, memorize the chosen work and read it in the class, or plan activities based on the literary piece? So the best way, best yung hinap natin, okay? Is it A, C, or B? Okay. Bye, kina Sir Melvin. Hindi ko na include a picture ko kay Melvin. <laughs> Did that, I was to include that the slides. I was so stunned kasi when he when he was a speaker in our final coaching. Kasi I only watched him on YouTube and then suddenly na sa harap ko na siya. So that was so <laughs> surreal to me. I had black. Oh, but I'm not sure if it's clear. So this is Sir Melvin and I. Yeah, I'm so happy. I also had lots of pictures with every top not sure na my encounter. Ko talaga nagpapa picture ako. You know what? When I passed the board exam, every week I at least bought one cake. Congrats, LPT, <laughs> licensed teacher. Yeah, I was so happy. Really, um, the success is really sweet if it's from hard work. Kasi pinaghirapan mo, so masaya sa pakiramdam. Okay, correct answer is yeah. Hey, it's letter B. Select a literary work that relates to the nature of your students. Now, board exam tip: be professional and be student centered. Okay, so of course you're still preparing for the, the teaching of literature. So the best way is to. Oh, yung letter D, okay naman. But the question is, what kind of literary piece ba? Does it relate ba to your students? So it should be, okay, letter B is the correct answer, okay? All right. <laughs> so let's proceed with, okay, again, be professional and be student-centered if you don't know the answer, okay? Uh, that's the key. Now, which method teaches structure covertly? structure oh i think i didn't uh, yeah right i didn't include a lot of notes but this is a really important question so which method teaches structure covertly is it audiolingual direct grammar translation or task-based well when i was still studying nahirapan ako sa ito. so let me see your answers mm-hmm Ah, okay. I, I don't think I include this one on my notes. 
<laughs> okay, magaling na distractor <laughs> is letter B, right? Actually, the answer is letter A. Remember, it's keyword natin dyan is covertly. So kapag covertly, I should have included this one. It's very important. Patago. Opposite ng covertly is overtly, okay? It's open. It's obvious. It's stark. Pero kapag covertly, it's patago. If you say direct grammar translation or task-based kasi, they teach grammar overtly. Talagang, lalo na letter C, very obvious na nagtuturo siya ng grammar. But if you teach grammar covertly, yung secret lang, it's audiolingual method. In audiolingual method kasi, uh, you listen and repeat, right? So, hindi mo alam, nat nalalaman mo na din pala yung grammar at the same time. You were, the student is expecting na speaking lang yung napapractice niya. But he didn't know that. He was also learning grammar as well. So, audiolingual method teaches structure covertly. Kapag covert, you can think na it's covered. So, it's, it's a secret, okay? If it's overtly, meaning it's open or obvious, okay? Let her be kasi mahaba. <laughs> yes, covertly is hidden. That is good. All right. So, next one. <laughs> There's actually a flashlight in front of me. Kaya masyadong maliwanag ang ating buhay. CAI, the problem is if we don't know what CAI is, but I hope you do, is very, is very useful in today's educational system. However, there are lapses in utilizing the technology for the teacher's part, for what reason ba? Is it letter A, lack of motivation on the side of the students? Lack of infrastructure and expertise in the CAI integration? Letter C, students can use different options or CAI cannot be matched with any learning experiences. So what are your answers? And ba yung lapses in utilizing the technology for the teacher's part in CAI? So let us, uh, okay, I will define along. CAI is computer-assisted instruction. Computer-assisted instruction. So at least you have an idea, okay? Yay! Some are getting the correct answer. I commend you for the kind of analysis that you have. This is a really good question. So expect, not, not this question literally, but questions like this that will come out, Okay. And if you're prepared, then it's a really good thing. So again, I'm trying to show you, na, no, not like, you know, buhusan ka ng lahat ng information, but I'm trying to show you the intensity of the board exam, what it's like. Correct answer is, of course, letter B. So lack of infrastructure and expertise in, say, CAI integration. So Computer-assisted instruction refers to instruction or remediation presented on a computer. But anyway, why is it letter B? So if you've noticed, during the pandemic, um, yeah, well, there, there was a drastic change, right, with our educational system. So some, te uh, some teachers, uh, of course, some were having online classes. And some teachers, kasi, like, not everyone is computer literate, right? Some are still using your traditional ones, especially yung malayo, right? Not in the city. And of course, lack of infrastructure. Kasi, ano na nangyayari? Infrastructure. Kasi, of course, if you have computers, you don't just put them in a normal room. So it should be in an air-conditioned something. And yeah, we, we lack that. That's really sad. And of course, expertise. So not everyone is magaling. Some others nga are climbing rooftops para lang makakuha ng signal. So ito yung lapses in utilizing. Maganda sana yung computer-assisted instruction. But I don't think that our situation in our country is that we, we are able to. Okay? So hindi pa natin kaya. Yeah. But anyway... <laughs> oh, nag, ah, you, you're using, okay, keywords utilizing and ex expertise. Cool, cool. So anyway, correct answer is letter B, okay? Now let's continue. Okay, so this is general English, major as well. Also called portmanteau. What do we call the words such as brunch or smug? Are they clipped, blended, allomorphs, or free morpheme? Anong Meljin? Guys, you okay? <laughs> Alam, ayun ko lang nakita. Ano ba? 
<laughs> Good joke. So, naglagay na ako ng flashlight. Last time, I looked so stressed. <laughs> and I was not expecting that a lot of people are gonna watch. <laughs> Ngayon, nag-lipstick na ako, but it's still not obvious. Anyway, what is the answer? It's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, most got the correct answer. So, tawag natin dito is blended. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng blended? It's... Oh, if you say blended, you combine two words, you drop some of the letters, and it will create an entirely new meaning. So, for example, yung brunch, that's breakfast and lunch, brunch. So you combine them, you drop a couple of words, and then it creates an entirely new meaning, brunch, okay? Yung smog naman, it's smoke and fog, right? Smog. So blended dyan. Ano ba yung clipped words? Excuse me. So if you say clipped words, so instead of saying the entire word, nasanay tayo na yung bahagi lang ng words yung sinasabi natin. So for example, motorbike is the full word, but they usually say just bike right? In Bisaya naman, it's motor instead of motor bike, right? Gymnasium, so instead of saying gymnasium, we say gym. So that's clipped, okay? Refrigerator, okay, in other, in, in English countries, they call it fridge, right? Ano yung sa Pilipinas? Ref. <laughs> that's still, okay, clipped word. There you go. So, ano naman yung allomorphs? So this explains why some sentences when added with suffixes is iba na yung pronunciation niya. So for example, yung lived, it has letter D in it. Pero yung worked, you don't you don't hear D, right? You hear T, worked. Tapos yung wedded, it's really ED, dead, right? So Alamorphs explain that. It also has some parts for plural nouns. Yep. And free morpheme is the? root word okay there you go so again brunch or smog they are the blended words okay but i hope that it's good that you know the difference with clipped and blended already good job so let's proceed with number 30. why do teachers need to use a variety of instructional materials in teaching so is it because it is required in the lesson objectives or teachers must show their creativity in the class there are a lot of materials within reach or students have diverse needs and interests okay so what do you think is the answer yes so i again i, I read the the announcement so october 2 in board exam it's been moved so you're given one week i don't know one week more pressure or one week more, one week more of chances to study. Yeah. Um, I also included at the end of this part, I included some of the things that you must remember while you're there, okay? So I hope right now you have your things already. Sobrang dali lang ng one month, guys. Believe me. Imagine now it's already, what, eight? Right? Yeah, it's Mama Mary's birthday. So it, I mean, August just ended and then ngayon we're on September 8th already. So do, do not chill, okay? Again, believe in yourself, but don't be too overconfident. Correct answer is, okay, it, students have diverse needs and interests. There will also be questions, palaging tinatanong yan, bakit daw kailangan flexible ang ating instructional materials? So always answer that because students have diverse needs and interests, okay? So that the uh, instructional materials can cater everyone. Okay? So again, be professional, be student-centered. Okay? Letter B, teachers must show their creativity. It's also good, but it, again, be professional and be student-centered. So yan yung number one purpose. Kung bakit diverse or flexible ang ating instructional material so that you can cater everyone. Hindi naman pwede that when you're teaching, oh, para lang to sa mga matatalino. Yung hindi masyadong matalino, bahala na kayo. No, right? You should include everyone. Okay? So it's letter D. Next one. Okay, here. Your opinion does not matter. I've said this so many times before. I don't want to say it again and again. <laughs> so give them what they are looking for. Yes. So here, you, you, some of us can be opinionated. So again, 
try to find the difference yung atake mo with the questions at yung kind answer na hinahanap ng PRC if they match, okay? Again, this is not a subjective exam. There were, yeah, as I've said, I don't know if I've said this before about the person na nag-rationalize siya sa answer sheet niya kung bakit yan yung sagot niya. No. Okay? So I'm sure you have your own ideas and opinions, but for now, you should give them what they are looking for, okay? So focus. Uh, just be professional, be student-centered, and again, they're measuring how good you are if you are going to be a teacher. That's why. Okay? So hello po, good evening. I hope everyone kumain na kayo. I also ate, of course. So teacher Gazzini asked the learners to enumerate the parts of the story in its chronological order. What did the teacher ask her students to do? Is it closed procedure, matching, sequ sequencing, or single response? So I think this is a bonus question. I've had a lot of bonus questions today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this, this is only uh, 50 items. Po. Okay. So, all right. Hello, Miss Bern Velasco. I really want to shout out everyone, believe me. <laughs> but, okay, but, but the, the comments run so quick. Correct answer is letter C. Very good. Keyword that in is chronological order. Ano ba yung closed procedure? Oh my. Closed procedure is fill in the blanks. Okay, matching. We all know what that is. Single response. It's either true or false. Yes or no. Okay, single responses. We also have multiple responses in which students can choose different answers. Okay. Well, this is a bonus question. Let's proceed right away with number 32. What was Virgil's... How do you read this? Is it with the H or G? Anyway, what was Virgil's crowning achievement? Is it the Aenid, Iliad and Odyssey, Percy Jackson, or the Medea? Chat your answers. Virgil's crowning achievement. So, lumabas ito, lumabas si Virgil, Homer. Yeah, especially in the Gen Ed. So the, for the first time takers, maybe you know this already, maybe you don't, but general education is shuffled, okay? <laughs> ano ba? I, because I was really shocked. I reviewed for a long time, but no one just told me na shuffled pala siya. Every time I answered kasi, it, it's always in order, like English lahat, Filipino lahat. So you can adjust well, right? However, pagdating ko doon, hala! Number one, math. Number two, science. Number three, Tagalog na naman, Filipino. That was hard. I was not prepared for that. So I was stunned for a bit, but hindi ako nagpadala because you're in the actual day na. Kaya yan. Anyway, okay. So correct answer is letter A. So this is the A nid. But anyway, that's it. So an epic poem of 12 books recounting the story of Anas. So Iliad and Odyssey, who wrote this, is Homer. Percy Jackson is Rick Riordan. Medea is Euripides. Actually, tatlo sila ni Euripides that wrote Medea. Okay? So ito yung crowning achievement ni Virgil. Very well. So let's proceed with number 32. Oh, this is really a good answer. Which, or a good question, rather. Which of the following shows positive transfer in interlanguage? So is it letter A? A Filipino student creates the sentence in English, wonderful is the view. Letter B, a Filipino student creates a sentence in English, still, the food is tasty. Or letter C, the student, a Filipino student says, the epict is shocking. Or letter D, a Filipino student pronounces the words, the word toothpaste correctly. Meron yang correctly sa last part, okay? So for letter D, tama yung pronunciation niya. So toothpaste. So which here talks about positive transfer in interlanguage? So chat your answers. So hello, good evening. <laughs> I am just running through the, the comments, okay? I'm reading it all. Yeah, so God bless you po, LPTs. <laughs> Nanginginig talaga ako when, when I claimed my license. When I learned that I passed my board exam, so, nagsas, ah, I was riding, sorry, I was riding a bus kasi. So I could not, wala kang expression. I could not do anything. When my family called me that you passed, you cannot scream, you cannot shout, you cannot be happy. Alangan naman eh. 
tapi ko yung driver ng bus, ba? Diba? At sabihin ko, baka akala na ibang pasahero, <laughs> gaga yata itong babaeng ito. I was so happy, but for for at least four hours, I could not express it because I was inside the bus. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> mas speechless ka talaga. So I know you will feel that too, right? This year, kahit pang Christmas gift lang, Lord, I will not ask for anything. Birthday gift lang, Lord, I will not ask for anything. License lang. Okay. Oh my goodness. So the correct answer is, ah, some of the distractors are useful. Ah. So what is positive transfer? Ba? Correct answer dito is, the food is tasty. Let me see. I, I didn't have another slide for the definition of terms. So if you say positive transfer, okay, so we are involving here two languages, okay? So for example, uh, Filipino and English. So in letter A, usually kasi, well, that's why it's easy for us to learn English. It's because same lang yung structure ng grammar natin, right? So it's subject, verb, object. I, because I heard in Japanese kasi iba yung structure ng grammar nila. But English and Filipino, they're the same. However, for letter A, kapag sabihin natin, maganda ang tanawin, translated into wonderful is the view, it does not sound so good, right? It's incorrect to listen to. So maganda yung tanawin, wonderful is the view. So it's not a positive transfer. So if you don't know what positive transfer is, context clues, positive. Ibig sabihin maganda siya. So we are going to remove all the negative, okay? So, tanggalin natin yung wonderful is the view at yung epict because it's also negative, right? So, we are left with letter B and letter D. So, creates a sentence, the food is tasty. For letter D naman, tama yung pronunciation niya, niya ng toothpaste. Bakit? Paano ba yung mga, paano ba tayo masasabihin ng toothpaste? Toothpaste, <laughs> right? So, anyway, the Filipino student pronounces the word toothpaste correctly. However, why is it not letter D? Because the pronunciation is not related to any language, right? However, in letter B, so in English, we can say, um, oh, in Tagalog, we can say, ang pagkain ay masarap. The food is tasty. So if you can see there, the transfer of the language, it's correct, right? So that's how the positive transfer is. I hope that's well understood. Again, I'm trying to simplify things as much as possible so that, yeah, however the question goes in your board exam, you can still find context clues and able to answer it, okay? So, yes. <laughs> we have 50 items only. So, yeah, we're now number 33. Medyo kanina lang. Anyway, number 34. You said you would come. What is displayed in the sentence and in the in the underlined words? Is it alliteration, oxymoron, consonance, or coreference? You said you would come. So what, what do we see here? Okay, so hello, good evening, everyone. <laughs> there are a lot from Zamboanga, Pangasinan. From Cebu, if you're from Cebu, I hope you visited the Simala Church already. I did twice. Kasi dalawang beses din na postpone yung exam ko, that's why. <laughs> okay. And there's also a chapel here somewhere in Mabola that they say it's really miraculous. So in your areas po, if you have chapels that they say it's miraculous or something, just go and pray there, okay? <laughs> Walang maniniwala. We have from Mindanao. Hello. So, correct answer is, okay, very good. Yung may sumagot, it's co-reference, okay? So, yung you there, you said, it's the same person. Sabi mo, darating ka. So, you and you, they are the same person, okay? So, pag sabihin kong, uh, uh, Jenny's, okay, uh, okay, Jenny ate her food and she drank her. So, Jenny and she, they're the same, okay? Let's go reference. It's letter D. So same yung nare refer nila na tao, okay? Next one. So, oh, okay. What is alliteration? But this is an initial consonant. So a lot of companies use alliteration para mas maging memorable yung name ng companies nila. So Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme, Coca-Cola, even tongue twisters are alliterations, okay? Peter Piper Pekka Pekka Pickers. So, laming pee 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 Right? They, they are alliterations. Ano ba yung oxymoron? 
contradictory words. So they are very contradictory but they make sense. So for example, kapag sabihin nating perfectly imperfect, big baby, <laughs> open secret. So they make sense, right? Kahit na contradictory sila. So they are oxymoron. Okay, hello from Abra. Zambales, nice. Bittersweet. Yes, good example. Consonance is the same consonant. Okay, so for example, Mike likes his new bike. So, Ike, 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 Ike. Right? That's consonance. Okay? So, co-reference, they are referring to the same person inside a sentence. Okay, so we have from... Andasanayon. Okay. Malay Balay, Corona Dal. Nice. Ormok. Okay. God bless you, LPTs. Davao Negros, South Luzon. Okay. Answer is co-reference. Okay. Dipolog Bagyo. Nice. I've never been anywhere in this life. Hoo-hoo. Wala ka pang travel. <laughs> so, number 35. Okay. This is, I hope, a bonus question. So, Kapi Zamboanga General Santos, South Cotabato. Nice. So, Ilo Ilo Albay. Anyway, Ilocosur. Wow, Ilocos. Okay, our president lives there. Anyway, a student reads the word saw for was and sees no difference between oil and 710. What learning difficulty is he having? So, is it A, B, A, dysgraphia? B. Dyslexia, C. Dyscalculia, or D. Dyspraxia. So, let me have it here. Okay. Kamigin Tandag. Oh, sorry, Gao. Sambuanga Sibugay, Takloban. <laughs> we have Puerto Princesa, Albay. Misamis Oriental. Cagayan de Oro. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Correct answer dito is, oh, daming sumagot ng tamang sagot. I think we will know this one. Basically, if you've seen American's film, yung uh, every child is special. Like my family and I, we are big movie fans and we have seen most of American's film. Yung Three Idiots, Got Genie, and yeah, every child is special. So the, the child character there, Ishan Awasti, so he's having difficulty in reading. So tawag dun sa difficulty niya is dyslexia. Okay. So tinulukan siya like the, the teacher there, American was had a very inspiring. Yep. Guys, if you have time, please watch that one. Every child is special. It will actually change your perspective. At lalo na guro tayong lahat. Yep. Anyway, so what is dysgraphia? It's the difficulty in writing. Discal or dyslexia is reading. Dyscalcula is with numbers. Dyspraxia naman is with the movement and coordination. So it, dyspraxia, it's not really about men mental. It's not a lot about mental, but it will lead to mental. So there you go. <laughs> the correct is dyslexia, okay? Uh, you, you, yeah, pay attention to them. But namang tinatanong the read difficulty. At least, you know, to the ba. That's also the goal. In when I review, I my goal is not only to for the board exam, but also for my personal as well. So at least you know. Anyway, which among the options talk about the effective filter hypothesis? Is it letter A motivation, self confidence, anxiety? Okay, how an individual acquires the language. Letter B, how a language acquirer develops competency over time. Letter C, talks about the learner's learned system acts as a monitor to what they are producing. Or letter D, when a speaker uses two or more languages in a conversation. So what are your answers? Again, Jung, uh, we're, talk we're asking about effective filter hypothesis. So ito yung kay Stephen Krashen, right? So, okay. I, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are going to take the, the October board exam. Because I heard next year that they will, like, change. So, <laughs> even my friends, they were hurrying up to take it. Anyway, correct answer is... There you go. So, uh, we had this one earlier, right? So, again, anything that is about your emotion or about your inner self... 
So it's always about effective. So motivation, self-confidence, and anxiety. Ano ba yung other options? So my my distractors are also possible questions or answers. So that I will not waste your time, right? Kasi nakakapagod kayo. Imagine makinig kasi isang tao for how many hours and then they will talk about things, okay? Uh, uh, unimportant things a lot. I do naman, but not a lot. Anyway, so letter B is input hypothesis. Again, it's about acquiring the language. It's not really about learning, okay? Language acquired develops competency over time. Yung letter C naman is the monitor hypothesis. So the learner's learned system acts as a monitor. So ano yung natutunan nila? Yan yung monitor. And... So two or more languages in a conversation. So this is code switching. I think in the Philippines, we, we do this very often, right? So in a sentence, we use Tagalog and English at the same time. So that's code switching. So sabihin mo, um, ipagpatawad mo because I was late. So there's Tagalog and English. So yeah, an example of code switching. Anyway, code switching is just a distractor. It's out of place with the other distractors. Your answer is letter A, okay? Effective filter hypothesis. Well done. Next one. Oh, let's go to mythology this time. Half human, half bull, what mythical creature is being referred to? Is it Gorgons, Pegasus, Minotaur, or Centaur? Chat your answers. I think yung mga gamers alam na alam to because some of the characters are taking inspiration from, yeah, the Greek myth. I'm not sure, but I hope so. Or I think so. So kapag half human, half bull, that is a... Okay, so everyone was answering. <laughs> na nasa ML pala talaga. <laughs> Again, as I was saying earlier, Everything you should do, it should be related to the board exam or to practice your mentality, okay? It's it's not that I'm a boring person, but the only things I play, I've tried playing ML. Don't get me wrong because na curious kasi ako, but isa akong pabigat sa team because I really, I'm not good at it and I stopped. When I was about to take the board exam, um, I... So I learned how to play the Rubik's Cube and solve every, I solve every color. That was a good mental practice. I played chess a lot. That's also a good mental practice. And I ate food na sabi nila is maganda raw para sa utak. And I, I hiked and jog a lot. So that will really help you guys, apart from purely studying. Okay? <laughs> so anyway, correct answer is letter C, Minotaur. So ano ba yung Gorgons? So snake-haired monster, for example, si Medusa, right? And they say, if you look at Medusa's eyes, nagiging stone ka. No. Or Valentina, right? You, a lot here are big fans of Darna. Okay. Pegasus is a winged horse. Centaur is half human, half horse. There are a lot of mythical creatures actually but i think they're pretty common man this is a bonus question tong it's yes i'm so good at tong it's too hindi naman sa <laughs> pagbo-boast but we can play <laughs> i'm not uh, just kidding i'm not good but i can play i love that one anyway this one okay the teacher wants to conduct a profi proficiency test what should the focus be proficiency test is it letter a the instrument, set of techniques, procedures, or items that requires performance on the part of the test taker. Letter B, to focus on general knowledge or skills of the applicants regardless of any training that they may have. Letter C, measure the student's ability in a specific area. Or letter B, help the learners decide which programs are appropriate to their abilities. So, um, okay, just, uh, okay. I'll give you a heads up. So, prof ed questions look like this, okay? Mahahaba yung options. And sometimes, napapagod tayo to analyze each. But please understand, you cannot live October 2 again in your life. Isang beses lang siya mangyayari. October 2, 2020. So, make sure na kahit napagod na pagod na kayo, you force yourself, okay? Because you will thank yourself later. If talaga, if the mental block na kayo, again, take a quick break, okay? And then you answer again. Huwag niyong damayan lahat ng items just because you're tired. 
just know that you cannot live that day again. Okay? And ang layo na nang narating nyo. So, please. Correct answer is <laughs> distractors are working this time. Don't worry, we'll differentiate them, okay? It's letter B. If you say proficiency test, well, let's try to make this simple. Proficient. So general knowledge or skill, how proficient the student is. Kahit na anong trainings na mela. Na differentiate. Yung letter A, it means a test. Test lang yun, okay? So letter B is the proficiency test. Ano ba yung achievement test? So letter C is achievement test. Measures the student's ability in a specific area. So if we will use keywords, na achieve ng student in that specific area. May na achieve ba siya? Or the goal or the aims of that specific area, okay? Tapos naman yung help the learners decide which programs are appropriate. That's placement test, okay? Again, placement test. So, I'm not sure, but yeah, in high school, we, we took a lot of those tests, right? Uh, to figure out kung saan ka pwedeng ilagay. So, placement. So, again, proficiency. It's how proficient you are, yung general knowledge or skills mo. Achievement naman is your ability in a specific area. So, answer natin dito in proficiency test, it's letter B, Okay regardless of any training that they may have. Now, let's proceed to number uh, 39. Ano ba? 38. 39. So, which intention is the abstract definition, cultural implication, or emotional sense behind the words said? Alin dito? Is it connotation, denotation, euphemism, or illusion? Yes, that was I was saying. So in the questionnaires, pwede nilang gumamit sila ng synonyms. They will use different words or structures. But structures, but uh, yeah, I, I think the meaning is just the same. Kaya nga, importante rin na you understand what is it about, okay? Except for Gen Ed, we have to... During Gen Ed kasi, that's how Sir Melvin really helped me kasi he will do a lot of drills. So I studied a lot in social sciences, so, yung Euphrates, Tigris, all, all those kinds. Philippine presidents, memorize ko yan lahat dati. Even though I really don't like to memorize, but I had to. Believe me, in college, I only studied once. Subject was political science. So, yun lang yung time na nag-aral ako. Or I studied before an exam in my entire college life. It's not because I'm, I'm like super, I'm a bad student. I'm not bad. I just really don't like tests. So, if you're, uh, as a college student, kung talagang magaling ka na sa exams and sanay ka nang mag-aral, it's such an advantage for you. So, good. Yeah, take advantage of that. Okay? So, as to me, nahirapan ako when I was challenged sa board exam kasi I never liked tests. Mas gusto ko yung activities, speaking, debates, doon na, natutuwa ako doon. Yeah. So, it's an advantage. And kung hindi ka naman sanay, so you practice just as I did. Okay? That's number one thing that actually worked. You practice again and again, okay, until you get it right. So, okay, so abstract definition palang, it's connotation, okay? So, abstract meaning. So, kapag sabihin kong, you are the apple of my eyes, uh, <laughs> hindi literally na, right? You're the apple of my eyes. It means, I like you or something, okay? If we say denotation naman, that's the literal or the dictionary meaning, okay? Euphemism, it's a mild and indirect expression. Yung merong masyadong masakit na term, but you're using euphemism para hindi siya masyadong masakit. So instead of saying, your friend died, you can say, your friend passed away. Instead of your boss that will tell you na, you are fired, uh, sasabihin niya, you are let go. So, it's the same meaning, but mild lang. Hindi siya masyadong masakit. Hindi siya masyadong direct. We call that euphemism, okay? And of course, we have allusion. So, in allusion, we are having the indirect reference. So, for example, um, okay, failing the board exam is my Achilles heel. Ah, so ano ba yung Achilles heel? The weakness, right? Achilles heel is the weakness. 
So indirect reference, yan yung allusion, tawag natin dyan, okay? So another example, I would say, yeah, merong allusion for yung, yung music video ni Taylor Swift. So, yeah, Romeo and Juliet ba yun? Uh, what was the title? Love Story, Love Story. So it has an allusion of Romeo and Juliet. Yep. So indirect reference, okay? So correct answer natin is, okay, connotation, abstract meaning. Yes. <laughs> so I know yung last, yeah. Rizal also came out many times. So as far as I remember, lumabas din si nung nanay ni Rizal. What was his work on, on this specific age? Anong poem yung nasulat niya like that? I did not focus on Rizal as well. Gosh, me ultimo adios. <laughs> right? So, number 40. Yay, we're in the last 10 items. This is only 50 items. I couldn't ko na kaya yung 70 because I only had one week. But anyway, all that glitters is not gold. From which line is this taken? Is it Hamlet, Macbeth, Merchant of Venice, or Othello? So, all that glitters is not gold. That's a really deep oh, word, set, of, set of words, right? Lahat ng kumikinang hindi ginto. Wow. So what are they? Fake? Maybe. <laughs> so correct answer is, yay. Most naman got the correct answer. It's Merchant of Venice. So I'll give you some famous lines for Hamlet. It's to be or not to be. Macbeth is overwhelming ambition of power. Oh my. Okay. Othello is good name in men and women. Okay. All right. So there you go. Very well. So it's Merchant of Venice. Okay. Shakespeare, nakikurious din ako kay Shakespeare, but again, like Divine Comedy, I don't think kaya ng aking mental ability. Even Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, I've tried reading again and again, sadyang hindi ko lang siya maintindihan. So, for William Shakespeare, let's just take the good lines. Okay? So, very well, everyone got the correct answer. Next, number 41. Uh, this is a really good question. The teacher is teaching the learners how to process the information gained. Which of the following is appropriate for the situation? Process the information gained. Is it letter A? Should they practice confirmation? For example, it is or is that is that what you were talking about? Letter B, ask for clarification, such as, what was that? Letter C, using fillers. So, for example, yung, mm, I think, um, yeah. Or letter D, ask to repeat, like, come again, please. So, which here should we use if we teach learners how to process information? Okay. Yes. Wow, that's nice. College pa lang nag review na. Good. I wish I had that mentality. When I was in college, I thought of completely different things. I was very competitive in a not good way. <laughs> okay, so good for you. Anyway, correct answer is remember that you are pro uh, learning how to process information. So it should be to use fillers, okay? You're not, if you process information, so if, for example, someone tell or asks you a question, tapos hindi ka agad makasagot, you're still processing it. So fillers are a good thing, okay? Like, um, I never thought about that, but let me think, but let, let me think about it for a while, okay? Because if you confirm that's different, it's the same with asking for clarification and asking someone to repeat. So you're not processing information, okay? So again, this is how you attack the board exam. You give them what they are looking for, okay? So pay attention to that one. Again, keyword natin is how to process the information gained. So use fillers. So board exam tip, do not answer unless you have last two options left. So this is where elimination works. Sometimes we eliminate the correct answer, be careful. I have tried. Yung sa Gen Ed, 
yung light travels faster in or sound ba yun? And I was confused between solid or vacuum. And I got that one incorrectly. So imagine, I had 50% chance, pero pinili ko pa rin yung hindi tama. So as early as now, practice yourselves, okay? So that you will not make the same mistakes as I did. Okay. <laughs> so do not answer unless you have last two options left, okay? Wag yung dire-diretso na auna pa lang tingin, sagot ka na agad. Yeah, there were exam takers that are like that. Yung roommate ng friend ko, sobrang bilis daw, ng, sobrang bilis daw sumagot. Like 30 minutes lang, tapos na siya. And he was wondering, siguro sobrang talino ng taong yon, or he's just toying with the board exam. It's either the two, right? So analyze very carefully. You cannot live the same day again. Always remember that. Next, which visual model and illustration device shows the categories arranged accordingly to its degree of abstraction and not its difficulty? So alin dito yung sagot? Is it Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning, Edgar Dale's Cone of Experiences, Gangness, I don't know how to read this, sorry, Outcomes of Learning, Jerome Broner's Three-Tired Model of Learning. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, option, ang hirap maging, oh. sinong option dito, yung mga hindi pinili? You know what? If people don't choose you, don't choose them as well, right? Why would you do that to yourself? No, you know, there, there are plenty of fishes in the sea. Plenty of fish nga pala. <laughs> so correct answer is... So from... Oh, it's degree of abstraction instead of difficulty. This is... Yay! Most got the correct answer. Edgar Dale's Cone of Experiences. So this is how it looks like, Okay. Uh, credits to Google. <laughs> so, yung pinakataas is the most abstract you read here until finally in the like in in the bottom part. So, it's you actually do the real thing. So, Edgar Dale's cone of experiences. So, there uh, yung pinaka bottom is called direct pur purposeful experiences, followed by the contri contrived experiences. Until, yeah, the top. So from the most abstract, okay? This is, this question, the answer is letter B. Edgar Dale's Cone of Experiences. Okay, very well. Next. Okay, ang dami nagcha-chat pag about love life. Uh, that's another lecture, guys. Papag-uusapan natin yan. <laughs> when you pass the board exam soon. So anyway, which does not belong to the group? Analyze well, okay? Is it modules, show and tell, realia, or PowerPoint presentation? Oh my, they are getting the, the uh, acronyms that Sir Melvin taught. That's really helpful. So anyway, which does not belong to the group? Chat your answers. What do you think? So analyze very carefully, okay? I've had this one incorrectly, actually. And we will know why. <laughs> okay, but some are still getting the correct answers naman. So tamang sagot dito is show and tell. Why? I would have answered PowerPoint presentation because I think it's a bit modern. But if you notice, module really and PowerPoint presentations, they are materials, okay? Yung show and tell lang yung activity. So as I was saying, analyze well, which does not belong to the group. Show and tell is the only activity in there, okay? The rest are materials, teaching materials or, in, yeah, instructional materials. So be careful. Analyze well. Next one, number 43. So in my major exam, at least dalawang beses lumabas si Harry Potter. Yung shapeshifter tsaka sinong sumulat. So who wrote Harry Potter? I'm sure not every one of you here are big fans, right? Di naman talaga lahat. I am, but not everyone is. Same with my family, they are not. Yung mama ko, pinipilit ko lang siyang manood. Tapos wala siyang choice. So, <laughs> nanonood na lang talaga siya. Okay. But I don't force them to read, of course. But I hope you know this one. Way, we have Potterheads. Nice. I'm from Slytherin. So, anyway. 
So to those who don't know a lot, it's letter A, okay? J.K. Rowling. She's the one who wrote Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, seven books or so. Sobrang mahal. I could not afford. I only read through my phone. Ano ba yung sinulat ni George R.R. R. Martin? It's The Games of Thrones, okay? Yung tawag niya sa libro is A Song of Fire and Ice. And uh, quick trivia about this one, hindi pa siya natapos. So, lahat kami were waiting for the book six. And until now, we really don't know. We, wala pa kami closure sa Games of Thrones. Even though the series is done. Anyway, the writer is George R. R. Martin, okay? Uh, J. R. R. Tolkien wrote the Lord of the Rings. And Rick Riordan wrote Percy Jackson. So as I was saying, you tap on very famous works and very famous authors, okay? So katulad nong ni uh, George Eliot, right? Mary Ann Evans. So instead na yung pen name niya, yung tinanong, yung tinanong sa amin is anong sinulat niya? So Silas Marner, okay? You can also tap on one of that. Nice, nice. So, correct answer is letter A. Wow, they loved Lord of the Rings. I'm still reading it right now. Masyadong mahirap. I love The Hobbit more than Lord of the Rings. That's why. Anyway, correct answer is letter A, number 45. This lays out, if you had my previous lecture, you can answer this one. This lays out the rules about the structure of a language directs how speakers should use the language what is being talked about so is it stylistics descriptive grammar prescriptive or diction chat your answers yes let's see i i i think sir melvin will upload this one as well <laughs> and of course to those takers who have kids i salute you for that as well so yeah, some kasi, you know, some are retakers, some are having kids. Some of my friends nga kababago lang nila ng anak and then they have to take the board exam. And nakalain nyo, if you have a child, hindi lang yung pagbubundes at panganganak yung mahirap. When the baby is out, mas mahirap siya kasi dapat mo siyang bantayan and wala kang tulog. And imagine magre-review ka pa. That's hard, right? So I commend you for that, wonderful parents. Future LPTs. For the retakers, ha? so figure out what did not work before and then do it again. And I know words hurt, but yeah, <laughs> you, you, you can do it. You can do it. Again, I have a friend who took it for six times. So if I were that person, I would not go that far. So he was really strong. Yeah, and I commend him for that. So congratulations. You know, not everyone is as strong as you are. Correct answer dito is, oh, it's not descriptive, guys. Direct how speakers should use. So <laughs> if this is, yeah, so... It's prescribing, right? So what's the difference? If you say descriptive, kasi descriptive is how it describes paano ginagamit ng speakers yung language, okay? Describes paano nila ginagamit. But if it's prescriptive, so they're describing or they're directing how speakers should use the language, okay? So, kaya nga, lays out rules kung paano nila gamitin. Yung describe, paano ginamit. Yung prescribe, paano gamitin, okay? Stylistics, this is the most common definition. A study of literary discourse from a linguistic orientation. And then, diction naman is, okay, appropriateness of a word, intended subject, genre, and audience. Okay, so yes, very well. It's letter C, okay? We have five items left. Oh, it's 9 p.m. already. Tomorrow's still Friday. Anyway, number 46, what is the aim? Bugbug natin question ito. What is the aim of a research proposal? Guys, chat your answers. Mm -hmm. So chat the letters. Is it to present an entire study? To defend theories, to find solutions, or to suggest a planned study. So, what is the aim of a research proposal? Imagine or try to take the keyword proposal. It's still a proposal. So, you are still going to... Mm -hmm. 
some are very basic questions and then we tend to miss it, okay? So for example, yung ano yung purpose ng drama? And the options there were to inspire, to bring happiness, or there was a very simple option to be performed in front of an audience. And that was the answer. So, so some questions can go like that. We think that it's yeah, it's very perplexing. We think that it's you know, you know yeah, more effective or more complicated. But the simple answers can be chosen as well. So aim of a research proposal is to suggest a planned study. So that's still a proposal. Okay. So you are suggesting a planned study. Yes, proposal suggest. The answer is in the question. Nice. Number 47, on levels of reading comprehension, which involves the understanding of information stated directly in the text. Is it critical, literal, interpretive, or inferential? I feel like I'm seeing this word differently again. So which here involves or stated directly in the text. Chat your answers. Yay, everyone got it. Naman. That's a good thing. So analyze well. Some questions is pwede siyang balik-balik ta rin. So make sure you understand entirely, okay? Again, everything you should do starting today or starting a couple of months ago should always be about the board exam. So you listen to lectures, you listen to people, you reach out, you read, master your reading comprehension. It's very important, okay? The correct answer is... Yes, it's letter B. Stated directly in the text. That's the literal. So stated directly, yung literal lang. Okay, what is critical? Okay, results to enhanced understanding. So if you say critical level of reading kasi, like the, these are strategies. So sobra yung pag-analyze mo sa yung binabasa. So you have an enhanced understanding of the text. Okay, critical reading. If you say interpretive, so it's how you as a reader interprets the author's feelings or thoughts that is stated on the text. Okay, inferential naman is a process. Okay, process written information and understand. Okay, so if you say inferential from the word inference, Okay, para kang nag-predict, okay? You're like forming the whole picture from the evidence given, okay? So you understand the underlying meaning of the text. So you are getting inferences, okay? Inferential. So if it says there na stated directly in the text, literal lang po iyon, okay? Or denotative. <laughs> Again, connotative, abstract. Okay, denotative is the, the literal, Next, number 48. Which assessment is appropriate for an oral examination in phonetics? Phonetics. Again, it's about sounds. So which assessment is appropriate? Is it authentic performance, portfolio, or written test? Mm -hmm. Okay, well done. So this is, okay, since oral examination in phonetics, you cannot have written, you cannot have portfolio. So confuse ka between two options na lang. But if you say authentic, it means real life. So hindi rin, okay? So correct answer there is performance. Kasi oral examination. So you have to hear the students speak, okay? Let's proceed number 49. Which point of view is used in an autobiography? Alin dito yung ginagamit for an autobiography? Is it the first, second, third, or third person omniscient? Chat your answers. Number 49. <laughs> I'm okay. It's madilim na. Right? Happy dinner, guys. Happy Friday. God bless you. Oh, the next weekend you study, yeah? So again, answer as answered difficult items as much as possible. And figure out why you get your answers incorrect. <laughs> I remember my classmate in college, but there were very difficult exams. And every time we check the paper, he will be like, 
the teacher will be like, okay, let's check your papers. And he will be like, no, ma'am, we will wrong them. <laughs> Basi lahat ng sagot namin, hindi tama. So hindi checking yung nangyayari. Wronging. Uh, let's not do, I hope that that will not happen, okay, when you take the board. Correct answer dito po is letter A, first person. Autobiography, ikaw mismo ang sumusulat, okay? So first person is I or we. Sino ba yung second person? So first person, ako. Second person is yung kausap ko, so it's you. Okay? Third person is yung pinag-usapan natin, he, she, or they. Third person omniscient naman, it's, this is the character na nakikita niya lahat, but it's outside every character. So, uh, kadalasang narrator in every stories, it's really the third person omniscient. So, nakikita niya lahat ng angles, but it's not a part of a character, okay? So, autobiography, it's always the first person, okay? Let's proceed finally for the last item. Wow, poetry. And I watered it with fears, night and morning with my tears. Which line is this taken from? Is it Desiderata, a psalm of life, a poison tree, or elegy writ in a churchyard? <laughs> so chat your answers. Is it A, B, C, or D? Let me see. All right. So correct answer is, uh, I think if you really don't know, we can get context clues, right? I watered it. So it may be related to a plant. Oh, alin ba yung options ng merong plant? It's the poison tree. Actually, sobrang ganda ng poetry. It's really short, guys. Ha? You can search after this one. Sobrang short ng poetry nito at sobrang ganda niya. It's, you know, about an unexpressed anger. Tapos lumaki siya. Yeah. And he watered it with fierce night and morning with his tears. That's cool. Because of this lecture, I remembered a lot of poetry that I used to love before. Yeah. Correct answer is a uh, poison tree. Okay. So, Desiderata, this is a, an inspirational poem. So, kung gusto niyong ma-inspire, you, you should read this one by Max Ehrman. Psalm of Life is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Okay. Yung sumulat ng Poison Tree is William Blake. And Elegy Written in the Churchyard is Thomas Gray. Elegy Written in the Churchyard is really deep. Katulad ng, alam niyo ba sino yung blind poet? It's John Milton. Okay, the blind poet. Lumalabas din siya. He has a poem na sobrang hirap. I could never <laughs> interpret in my mental capacity. But anyway, that's it. So before I give you over to Sir Melvin, I have here some tips as well. Guys, you must understand you cannot afford to take the board exam again. Okay, so right now na hindi pa siya nangyayari, you have to internalize this thought. You cannot afford to take the board exam again. Imagine, nagbayad kayo na review center, nag-effort kayo, and your time was taken too much in the review. So when you are answering there, please put this in your mind. Hindi, hindi ka nababalik, okay? So next one is be intentional. You must understand that you have to be intentional with your goals. Uh, what does this mean ba? Um, you know, you, you do things para mangyari siya. Okay, life does not just happen if you just wait. You have to go out there. So if you want to top or pass the board exam, be intentional. So mag-aral ka, mag-practice ka, you exercise, you do things na para sa, okay, ikari-realize ng goal mo, right? Or just like Elon Musk. Ano yun? Um, it's either you go where you, it's either you get where you're going to or die trying, Okay. So, you get in life what you have the courage to ask for. Hindi yung nag-i-imagine, naghihintay ka lang. Be intentional. Okay? Make actions. And of course, be inquisitive. So, as I have been saying po, as I have been saying po uh, prior, like, there are a lot of people na naging LPT na. Hindi lang iisa. Hindi lang dalawa. There are a lot. Your friends, your classmates, your professors before top notchers na kilala mo ask them talk to them they will help you if there are questions na nahihirapan ka kasi madaming sagot yung each review center talk to them be inquisitive okay so of course surround yourself with people that will support you whether you pass or fail especially when you fail okay don't surround yourself with anything toxic so ipasok nyo sa kalooban nyo is just 
uh, avoid toxicity. That includes what you feed your mind. So the social media, ano bang tinitingnan mo sa social media? So what you feed your mind and what you feed your body as well. Be careful, okay? Make sure that anything is good for your mind. So you cannot afford to take the board exam again. Be intentional to your goals. Be inquisitive. And these are the things that you must remember. So shade the set correctly, you guys. So there are set A and set B kasi. And you listen to your proctor anong, anong set ka, okay? Because there was one pang top notcher caliber na siya. However, na zero siya sa prof ed. Walang masi zero sa board exam, but na zero siya. Probably it was because of the set. So put it in your mind. Number one talaga, shade the set correctly, okay? Answer the booklet first, then shade. Para masiguro mo. So as much as you're possible, if you're done answering the booklet, you can add check marks, okay? And then you can count ilan yung sure mong answers. Next, don't erase, don't skip. And I'm not saying na bawal mag-erase. Okay lang naman, but as much as possible, please. Okay, kaya nga mag-answer ka sa booklet first para hindi ka na mag-erase. Presence of mind, okay? That follows, number four. Ako, I, I'm so happy that I never erased para malinis yung aking mentality. Hindi ako mapapraning after taking na, oh my gosh, nag-erase ako. Anong mangyayari? Baka tumalon yung machine or something. And also, please don't skip because if you skip, tapos na yung laban. Okay, talo ka na. So, presence of mind. Remember, first-time takers, gen ed is shuffled. So, prepare your brain, okay? Next, don't waste your energy on other things. So, wag na makipag-usap sa kahit ano. Don't drink a lot of water kasi you will pee a lot. So, madi-divide yung attention mo, okay? So, right now, prepare everything you need. N95 mask, your pencils, face shield, yung annexes na kinakailangan ng PRC, yung NOAA. Make sure they're there. As to me, I did a lot of photocopies just in case. Pero hindi naman nagamit. Pero still, praning kasi ako. And then, treat your answer sheet as if it is your life. Treat your answer sheet as if it is your life. Okay? So, make sure na malinis siya dahil yan yung dadaan sa makina. Okay? So, if you're eating, please do not drop anything on the answer sheet. Make sure that your table is clean. And if you have sweaty hands, you bring handkerchief or whatever. Okay? You know yourself. So, be careful. Treat your answer sheet as if it is your life. Next one is, as much as possible, screenshot this one. Kasi these are really useful. And then you made a checklist kung nagawa mo ba siya during the board. And then, count the items before submitting. So, make sure 150 items yung sinulat mo. Okay? As for me, I counted it at least three times just to be sure. I know it's praning, but it, it gave me peace of mind. Sharpen your pencils ahead para hindi madumihan ang inyong kamay. You don't have time to sharpen when you're there, okay? Your focus is to get the right answer. Of course, be mindful about the time. So as I was saying, may kasama ako, pinasagot sa, pinashaden sa kanya yung last 50 items. Walang, ans well, hindi siya nagbabasa because there was no time. So be mindful about the time. If it's difficult, skip it. Ima-inote mo lang sa questionnaire mo, okay? And of course, pray. So, we have Sir Melvin. <laughs> Hello, sir. He said, that's it. As much as possible, guys, screenshot this one. And thank you so much for indulging with me. Hindi ko paminahon mo, Moy, sa motivation. Ginahan ko mahimong take her balik. Yeah, to be honest. Moy, kay ka mo motivate. Ang top one. <laughs> you will top. <laughs> You'll be the top one, sir, if you take again. <laughs> oh, ganahan sa kuma student ug balik like na challenge pa dulong ba mo take og board. Oh, you are a student man sir, di ba? Masters nice. Ah, oh, masters pero wala may board. Hmm. First day of my thesis, I enrolled. Is it difficult? Mahirap po ba? <laughs> Ande. Oh, oh para sa iyo. Para sa aming normal na tao. <laughs> so ako abnormal, ganun. <laughs> no, no, no. A talented. Or yeah, matalino. <laughs> With the mom, lumayag you kay ka. Very, Yay, very fun. Thank you. Okay, screenshot so, yeah. mo ni B para ako sa depost. Smile sa mom. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you, Sir Melvin. And yeah, thank yeah, you, guys. Yes, Salamat God so bless you. I like Bisaya na lang ko because I could not express it in Filipino. I, I am in awe right now. Ang galing talaga magturo, ang galing mag-motivate. 
So, <laughs> my petition for part 3, I think that will be done uh, on Mom's uh, YouTube channel. No? So, Mom, start now your YouTube channel. Eh? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. Hopefully. Please, so, yon, yeah. please consider. Thank you. Thank you, Mom Jen. Rest na. Thank Pahinga you. na po. Uh, yes, po. Thank you. Box. God bless all Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Uy. Kamu, mga igat. <laughs> Yamatra, oh. Gikilig ko na siya kang Mom. Woo! Mag-LPT ka muna. <laughs> Laban para sa lisensya. Very good. Yun. O, bago lumande, dapat pumasa muna sa board exam. O, yun yun. <laughs> Teka lang po ah, i-post po muna to. Tips and techniques. Tutup po ba ang taong bayan? I hope so ha na uh, liglig sa kaalaman no? ang gabi ninyo sa ngayon. Actually, ang araw ninyo sa ngayon. No? Because two different general education and majorships ang inyo pong naranasan today. So, yun. This is all for you. And bukas po, um, pupunta po ako somewhere to meet some dreamers. Okay. So, magkikita kami personal and yes, na uh, pasensya na po sa mga hindi ko talaga mapupuntahan kasi nga po, Sir Melvin is just, you know, um, gusto ko pumunta actually, pero takot ako kasi alam nyo naman, no, na um, ako po ay nagmula sa uh, karamihan sa mga, I mean, ako ay nagmula sa pinagmula ng karamihan ng mga Pilipino. Napakahirap po. So, you know what? Uh, I am so, what, uh, uh, skeptical, no, to to venture, no, to go somewhere. Kasi nga po, takot ako na baka, <laughs> yung, alam nyo yon parang um, it's something na hindi naman po pwedeng uh, mangyari sa akin dahil nga po sa sa popularity na meron ako pero actually yes takot talaga ako pumunta ng ibang lugar lalo, lalo na yung pagsakay ng eroplano gusto ko may kasama talaga kasi takot ako oh so pasensya na po sa mga hindi ko talaga mapupuntahan napakarami niyo na pong nagre-request sa akin diyan pero don't worry po dahil meron tayong technology gagawin ko po ang lahat para makapagturo po sa inyo no and then para po sa pupuntahan ko just cherish the moment po okay sa mga taga mas bate diyan you're so lucky po dahil sa lahat po ng uh, nagko-contact na napupuntahan natin kayo yung pinaka napili natin at um, sana i-cherish niyo po yung moment natin no na ako ay nandiyan kasama ninyo maraming salamat po sa nagbibigay no ng mga super stickers diyan mabuhay po kayo sa inyong generous hearts no Uh, pagpalain kayo ng uh, puong may kapal and then ibibigay sana sa inyo yung hangad ng inyong mga puso na magiging LPT this October 2, 2022.